Thank you. Honourable the, the Minister of Agriculture. Thank you very much, uh, House Chairperson, and thank you very much to the Honourable Hadebe for the question. Um, obviously, there's a lot more we have to do uh, to ensure uh, the upskilling of women and the greater participation of women in agriculture. But as part of its transformation trajectory, the Department of Agriculture has introduced measures to empower and mainstream designated groups, including women, uh, in the sector. The department remains fundamentally committed to the empowerment of women, and thus will continue to implement the following initiatives. Firstly, the Women's Entrepreneurs Awards, which is a departmental flagship program that has been implemented over two decades in conjunction with the provincial departments of agriculture. This has benefited over 300 women producers and is designed specifically to promote and encourage women participation in the sector by publicly awarding their efforts and contribution towards food security, job creation, poverty alleviation, and economic growth. The National Comprehensive Policy on Producer Development Support aims to regulate and guide the provision of support to various categories of producers, thereby contributing to sustainable and competitive agriculture. This policy stipulates and upholds conditions which enable all previously disadvantaged citizens and targeted groups, including women, youth, and people with disabilities, by ensuring that at least 50% of women, 40% of youth, and 10% of persons with disabilities are supported. The norms and standards and inclusion of designated groups, the NSDG is a tool used by the department to influence uh, and provide guidelines for setting measurable targets for departmental programs to prioritize designated groups and to articulate against prescribed targets. The NSDG advocates for departmental programs to benefit at least 50% women, 40% to youth, and 10% to persons with disabilities, and is thus enforced through departmental program approval committees. The training and capacity building part of the question that you ask, Honorable Hadebe, is dealt with through an intervention administered under the Comprehensive Agricultural Support Program, CASP. 10% of the CASP funding is dedicated to training, provision of mentorship, and placement of young agricultural graduates in farms for practical exposure. In all of these programs, the department endeavors to maintain a 50% target for women. Is this enough? No, it is not enough. And I would recommend that all members of the House, and I've bought a copy for the Honorable Hadebe today, read the report done by the Center uh, sorry, the Commission for Gender Equality, which was released in July 2024, which is a comprehensive look at the role of women in agriculture and makes some good recommendations that the department is digesting. The report is called Do Women Reap What They Sow? and the Experiences of Women Farm Workers. And it makes some very sound suggestions about what we could be doing as a department, but certainly as a country, to ensure that women play a greater role in agriculture. And I'm happy to provide the honorable member with a copy of that. Thank you. Thank you. Honourable members, I've been informed that the Honourable Inkosi Sebkulu will take charge of the first follow-up question on behalf of Honourable Khadebe. Honourable member. Thank you, Mr. Person. Honourable Minister, sounds very uh, intensive what you've just uh, re responded to, the question that has been raised by Honourable Khadebe. But um, currently, we are having the biggest challenge, uh, Honourable Minister, in the department, where even the land that has been long redistributed has not been uh, seen to be taken uh, off the ground for production. My then question would be, having co committed yourself or your department on the matter, are these uh, black, black women going to be, uh, as going to be farm, farmers? Are they going to be provided with, with equipment, including mechanization, as it has been uh, the stumbling block uh, in getting a uh, Ready to spirit land uh, to produce successfully by farmers. Are the women going to get the equipment so that they successfully work? Thank you. The Honorable the Minister. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Sebakulu, for the question, um, and Korsi Sebakulu for the question. Thank you very much. As you would know um, from the various interactions at portfolio committee level, um, there is a large focus within the department on making sure that we are able to provide the tools necessary to make a success 
of land and agriculture that has been handed over to beneficiaries. Uh, it is not good enough just to simply provide the land and then say to people, well, go on and get on with becoming successful farmers. And that's precisely why through CASP, Elima Lecetta, and other programs, uh, we focus on providing not only the uh, support from an extension uh, officer point of view and agricultural advice, but also to try and provide equipment where necessary. Um, obviously, the, I believe there needs to be a lot more done to ensure that we're focusing on three key uh, aspects of these projects, sustainability, viability, and profitability. We need to, when we hand over these, this equipment and this assistance to female farmers, to make sure that they are able to then enter the value chain through market linkages, access to, uh, to, to the value chain, so they can have a meaningful contribution. And this means then that the department can move on to other beneficiaries. If you're providing the same beneficiaries year after year with the same assistance, are we really doing what we should be doing to grow uh, women participation in the sector? I would say no. So those three aspects in providing equipment and ensuring that we're providing the assistance, sustainability, viability, and profitability are going to have to guide the department's work in that regard. Thank you. Thank you. The second supplementary question will be asked by the Honorable Ndalane. Thank you, Honorable House Chair. Uh, the growth in agriculture is considered to be generally more effective in reducing poverty than an equivalent amount of growth generated outside of agriculture. Considering that the vast majority of the poor who are also food insecure are people located in rural areas with, with poor investment and infrastructure. What measures will the department be introducing to invest in infrastructure, in communal land and rural farming areas to address the unenvying development in the sector? I thank you, House Chairperson. The Honorable the Minister. Thank you. An excellent question from the Honourable Indeleni. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, what we've got to do is make sure that when we are investing in areas, we're investing in infrastructure that is going to actually be catalytic. Uh, far too many times we go in with projects that look really good on paper, but are not really making a big impact um, on the ground there. And it is something that we're going to have to, to focus on. There is also going to have to be a lot of synergy between the Department of Agriculture and other departments, for instance, Department of Transport, Department of, uh, of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, because there are linkages. Uh, farmers need to be able to get their products, whether they're small or large farmers, to markets. They need to be able to get them to places where they can sell them. But they can't do that with impossible roads and, and other uh, obstacles that currently inhibit them being able to do so. Uh, for instance, bad roads and citrus areas mean that your soft fruits are very badly damaged before you can get them to a sustainable market. So yes, we have to invest more in infrastructure, but it's going to have to be a whole of government approach that focuses on leveraging both the Transport Committee, the Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs Committees. So we have a coordinated way to ensure that the infrastructure projects that we roll out um, are are sustainable, but also catalytic in nature. And the departments are not doing things in isolation when we could be working together in a more uh, joined up government way to be able to ensure that these projects, rare infrastructure particularly, has a catalytic effect on being able to give access to market for farmers in a far more sustainable way. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. The third supplementary question will be asked by the Honorable Smith. Uh, thank you, Honourable House Chair. Um, in, Minister, uh, in order to upskill and em empower young prospective men and women of all races who want uh, to start a career in, in the agricultural sector, um, um, it is essential that South Africa must have sufficient well accessible and well functioning uh, agricultural learning institutions such as Elsenburg in the western cape we can no, uh, we know, know that there are such institutions in other provinces but many of them are in a dire state 
Does the minister agree that intervention is required to improve these other institutions' uh, level of learning, as well as establishing possible new institutions of agricultural learning in as many uh, uh, as many of the other provinces as well? Thank you, uh, honourable minister. Thank you, the honourable minister. Thank you very much to the honourable member for the question, uh, House Chair. And I would say I agree completely uh, with my right honourable friend in terms of the agricultural colleges. If we are wanting to grow the knowledge base within the agricultural sector in South Africa, then we've got to be serious about investing in the education, training and development of, the, of those people who wish to enter the sector. And whilst Elsenberg is certainly in very good state and is a, a good example, sadly some of our other agricultural colleges have been left behind in terms of infrastructure maintenance and the, and the grounds have been left in very poor condition. Uh, there are currently, uh, is currently a move to bring these uh, in line with our department and we would obviously look to play our role in assisting in both the physical but also the curriculum that would be required. And of course, there's going to have to be, as I said in the previous question, a greater synergy as well with departments like higher education, with science and technology, um, to be able to empower these campuses to produce farmers uh, of the future. Um, this is important. We also then need to address what are shortages and shortfalls with the agricultural sector in South Africa, and then also encourage school leavers into those particular professions or uh, learnerships. I use by way of example the shortage of veterinary surgeons that we have in South Africa. Biosecurity remains one of the biggest impediments to us being able to expand on current trade agreements with other countries, but also to expand our horizons to new markets around the world. And if we don't get on top of biosecurity, it's going to continue to hold us back. To get on top of it, we need scientists, plant scientists, we need animal uh, scientists and veterinary surgeons so that they can, they can assist us. I'm very proud to say we have already uh, announced as a department the creation of a new uh, veterinary services uh, campus at another university. We're hoping to make some announcements about others. Thank you. Um, but we have to focus on creating and Thank you, Minister. the farmers of the future. Thank you. The last supplementary question will be asked by the Honourable Ghana. Minister, the agricultural sector has a broad-based black economic empowerment sector code. How will you, as a minister, implement the agri-BEE and blended finance to ensure the inclusion of black women in the agricultural sector value chain? Thank you, the Honourable Minister. Uh, thank you very much, House Chair, and thanks to the Honourable Garner for the question. Um, I've already announced some of the programs that the department has in place to empower women in the sector. Um, they're also, one of the biggest impediments to women accessing farming is, is access to finance. Um, there is, because of the patriarchal society that still dominates in South Africa, a lot of women really battle to, uh, to access finance. And it, it is also particularly endemic in the rural areas where people lack the security of tenure to be able to secure finance from the traditional means. Working with the Land Bank through the Blended Finance Scheme, which is a partnership between the department, the Land Bank, and other financial institutions, we're looking at ways to make it easier for people who are not able to access traditional finance, particularly women who are a, a strong focus of this particular program, to be able to access that finance so that they can overcome that capital impediment of being able to get into the sector. Farming is economics, farming is science. Uh, it is not just a matter of putting seeds in the ground and expecting uh, you know, great yields. There is a great deal of capital investment that needs to go into making a successful, commercially viable farm uh, and farming operation. And to overcome that hurdle, particularly for women and historically disadvantaged individuals, the AgroBE Fund, uh, the Blended Finance Scheme, all focuses on doing that. The Agriculture and Agro-Processing Master Plan as well which is the master plan for the agriculture sector, also focuses very strongly on the role of women and historically disadvantaged individuals and uses a public-private partnership model to be able to ensure that there is effective transformation within the sector. 
Thank you very much. Thank you.